Reverend Father, give the blessing. Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace from on high and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy church, and for all who enter it with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our holy father, Francis Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for the God-loving Bishop Milan, for the Venerable Presbyterate, the Diaconate in Christ, and all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our government and for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
that we be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever-Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord of God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, Loving us all be an expression, look with compassion on us and this holy church master, and show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever, and forever.
Wisdom, be attentive. Come, let us worship and bow before Christ, O Son of God, risen from the dead. Save us, your singing to you. Alleluia. Let us be attentive. Please speak to all of wisdom. Be attentive. You, O Lord, will keep us and preserve us forever. <clears throat> forever from this generation. Help, O Lord, for good men have vanished.
wisdom. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, see, I write to you in my own large handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised are making a play for human approval with an eye to escaping persecution for the cross of Christ. The very ones who accept circumcision do not follow the law themselves. They want you to be circumcised, only that they may boast about your bodily observance. May I never boast of anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it, the world has been crucified to me, and I to the world. It means nothing whether one is circumcised or not. All that matters is that one is created anew. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life and on the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the brand marks of Jesus in my body. Brethren, may the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Peace be to your reader. Wisdom be attentive. I will sing forever of your love, O Lord. Through all ages, my mouth will proclaim your truth. Reverend Father, blessed proclaimer of the gospel of the Holy Apostle and Evangelist Luke. May God, through the prayers of the Holy, Glorious, Illustrious Apostle Evangelist Luke, grant that you proclaim the word with great power for the fulfillment of the gospel is beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. All reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, a man named Jairus, who was chief of the synagogue, came up and fell at the feet of Jesus begging they come to his home because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus went, the crowds almost crushed him, a woman with a hemorrhage of twelve years' duration, incurable, at any doctor's hands, came up behind him and touched the tassel of his cloak. Immediately her bleeding stopped. Jesus asked, Who touched me? Everyone disclaimed doing it, while Peter said, Lord, the crowds are milling and pressing around you. Jesus insisted, someone touched me. I know that my power has gone forth from me. When the woman saw that her act had not gone unnoticed, she came forward trembling, falling at his feet, she related, before the whole assemblage, why she had touched him and how she had been instantly cured. Jesus said to her, Daughter, it is your faith that has cured you. Now go in peace. He was still speaking when a man came from the ruler's house with an announcement. Your daughter is dead. Do not bother the teacher further. Jesus heard this 
And his response was, Fear is useless. What is needed is trust, and her life will be spared. Once he had arrived at the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter, John, James, and the child's parents. While everyone wept and lamented her, Jesus said, Stop crying, for she is not dead but asleep. They laughed at him, being certain she was dead. Jesus took her by the hand and spoke these words, Get up, child. The breath of life returned to her, and she got up immediately. Whereupon he told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astounded, but Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. Glory to Jesus Christ. We heard about two wonderful miracles from our gospel today. Two miracles, two, two wonderful things happened to two people in this reading. And we can ask that what was the trigger? How it happened that this God's power was present in these two cases? And the, the answer, answer is clear. Those two people came, approached Christ they enter to God's presence with their request. But it's a little bit strange because we can hear from gospel that there was a crowd, there were a lot of people who were touching Christ, moving him somehow, but no miracle. Only those two people experience God's help, God's power. And it gives us, or it offers us some kind of clue or key to understanding how we should approach God. How can we enter or how we should enter to God's presence to experience His power and His grace. What was special in those, in case of those two people? At first they were looking for Christ. They really came there to meet Christ. And their desire was because they were helpless. They both, they found that they used all options they had to solve their problem. They realized that they are powerless and they need somebody who has power to help them. Did they have full theological knowledge who Christ is? For sure not. But they had faith that he has power to help them. So they approached him. They were looking for him with deep respect. You know, this Jairus, wow, this was act of deep respect how he approached Christ. That woman 
she even didn't dare to, to ask him something. She just wanted in secret to touch him. Deep respect they had their, their, uh, their hearts. And evidently, this was enough for God to start to act. The others, they didn't have this approach. They came from maybe curiosity, maybe they wanted to see something special. They didn't have this deep respect. They didn't need this need for God in their hearts, uh, hearts. And nothing happened. And in this, we can find He for us how to pray, how to approach God, how to touch Him. And one question you know, for us all, when we woke up today and we arrived this Sunday, did we bring to our mind this thought, in few moments I am going to meet my God. In few moments I am to approach living God. He's willing to give me eternal life. And this living God is going to enter to my heart. And did the thought put us in the, this, this attitude of deep respect, love? Even a thought about, am I worthy to receive that? Am I worthy to approach this, my God? Probably, probably the thought was not very, it's not very often in our minds. Probably we come to a church because it is Sunday and we should go and it's normal something. But in this we can be compared to this crowd who came to see Christ. But they were not open for his power to enter to their lives. Only those two people who came because they felt they, I need him, I need his power. I, because I'm helpless, powerless. I need him to help me, and I have faith that he is going to help me. Those two people who came with this need, this desire, who found a way to come to this God's presence, and with this deep respect and faith, they tasted God's power in their life. And this can be our case too. This is how we are supposed to pray. This is how we are supposed to come for the liturgy or other services. With this desire to meet Christ, to touch Him, to ask Him because we feel that we need his help, that we need his grace to save our souls. And, but this doesn't come from nowhere. This attitude, this way how we approach God, it's growing in us if we try to care about this, when we practice that. If I don't try to raise this or, or to bring this my attentiveness, this good attitude 
before my prayer, before I come to the church, before I really start to think about God. So it will be not present in our lives. And we will be missing a lot of good things which we can accept from our Lord just because we, are, we will be ignorant. It's good for us to start to practice that, to learn and to come with the thoughts for the liturgy. And what will happen is that not only we will see that God is really making miracles in our lives, but we will see ourselves in true light really understanding who we are and probably this is the biggest miracle God makes in our souls when we know which direction to take, what to do to come to salvation. So I would like to encourage you to take this advice which comes out from this gospel. Let's try to practice this correct setting of heart and our mind before we start to pray, before we enter to the liturgy, before we approach God. This longing in heart for God, this calming of our thoughts, this deep respect and faith, And those are open doors through which God's grace comes to us and transforms us. Amen. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, The Lord have mercy. <laughs> o Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray you, hear and have mercy. The Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray you, Hear and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis Pope of Rome, and for our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Again, we pray for the people here present who we'll await your great and abundant mercy for those who show us mercy and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever.
May the Lord God remember in his kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now, and ever, and forever. May the Lord God remember his kingdom, our Holy Father Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Milan, the entire priest of the Econal Monastic Order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. May the Lord God remember your priesthood and your principles. May the Lord speak upon your peaceful life and the shadow of you. Remember me, God. Amen. For the precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Almighty, alone, our Holy, receive the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their heart. Accept also the prayer of us sinners. Bring us to the holy altar. Enable us to offer gifts and spiritual sacrifices for our sins. And for the people's failings, make us worthy to find fear in your sight that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you, and that the good spirit of your grace may rest on us, and these gives her present and on all your people. Grant this mercy, so will begotten Son, with me blessed, together with your all-holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Let us love one another, that with one mind we may profess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence, and the divided. The doors, the doors, in wisdom, let us be attentive. Proceeds from 
Stand, let us stand aright, let us stand in awe, let us be attentive to offer the holy anaphora in peace. Praise you to thank you to worship in every place your dominion for your God, ineffable, inconceivable, invisible, incomprehensible, ever existing, ever same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You brought us out of non existence into being again, raised us up when we had fallen, left nothing undone, and you brought us to heaven and gave us your kingdom to come. For all this we thank you in your only begotten Son in your Holy Spirit for all that we know and that we do not know for the manifest and the benefits bestowed on us. We also thank you for this liturgy which you are pleased to accept from our hands. Even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged, many eyes soaring out on their wings. Singing, shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumph of him all. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. With these blessed powers, O loving kind Master, and say, Holy are you, all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you, all holy, magnificent is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him should not perish but have life everlasting. He came and fulfilled the whole divine plan in our behalf. On the night he was betrayed, or rather, when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure and immaculate hands, gave thanks and blessed and sanctified broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Amen. Likewise, he took the choice after supper, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Amen. 
remembering their 47 command and all has come to pass in our behalf, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension into heaven, the singing at the right hand of the second coming glory. Offer you your own from your own, always and everywhere. spiritual and body sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and treat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying before us. Reverend Father, bless the Holy Bread. And make this bread the precious body of your Christ. Amen. Reverend Father, bless the Holy Chalice. And that which is in this show is the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Reverend Father, bless both. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, for those who partake of them, they may bring about the spirit of vigilance, the remission of sins. The communion of your Holy Spirit, the fullness of the heavenly kingdom, and confidence in you, not a judgment or condemnation. Moreover, we offer you this spiritual sacrifice for those who part in faith. The forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, countless ascetics, and for which your spirit is brought to perfection in faith. He is special for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, God the Otokos. And of the Virgin Mary. Among the first, Lord, remember our Holy Father, Francis Poporom, our most reverend Metropolitan Volume, our God, loving Bishop Milana, preserve them for your Holy Church in peace, safety, honor, health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of the truth. And remember Remember, Lord, this city in which it dwell in every city and community and the faithful living in them. Remember, Lord, those who travel by sea, air, and land, the sick, the suffer, and the captive grant them salvation. Remember, Lord, those who bring offerings and perform good deeds in your holy churches, and those who remember the poor upon all of us, send down your mercies, and grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise the most honored, magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Amen. 
Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, that our God who loves us all may receive them on his holy, heavenly and mystical altar as an aroma of spiritual fragrance and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity in the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Amen. Love us all, we come here our whole life and hope and we implore, pray, and treat you. Make us worthy to partake with our whole conscience of your heavenly, awesome mysteries from this sacred and spiritual table. May they bring about the remission of sins, the pardon, transgressions, the communion of the Holy Spirit, the inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence in our judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, that we may be confidence and without condemnation. There I call you Father, God of heaven, and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in the kingdom and the power and the glory Father, Son and Holy Spirit now and ever and forever Amen Peace be to all and to your spirit Bow your heads to the Lord The invisible King, for by magical power you have fashioned all things and greatness and mercy brought all things of non existence into being. Look down from heaven, a master, upon those who bow their heads to you, for they do not bow to flesh and blood, but to you, dear Son God. Therefore, O Master, make smooth the good of all the paths that lies ahead according to the need of each. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel. Cure those rustic opposition of souls and bodies. Through the grace, the mercy, and loving kindness of only begotten Son with me are blessed, together with your all holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us be attentive. Holy gifts to holy people.
but like a thief I profess you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come in your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come in your kingdom. May partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment. Behold, I approach mortal king and I got every part of you, precious and holy. Lord of the Lord, God of the Lord, I also do confess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body and your life-giving blood, which I pray you may be worthy to receive for the remission of all my sins and for life everlasting. Amen. O God, bless me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for I have sinned without knowing. Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to him. Oh, Lord, we shall receive the precious body of blood. Mercy to pay the valley's pain. Someone takes the precious body of blood. Mercy to pay Amen. 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 Thank you. 
Jesus Christ, the Father, blood, mercy, of flavor, the last day, amen. Terrorists of the precious body, blood, mercy, the flesh of the last day, amen. Save your people, God, and bless your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have found the true faith, and we worship the undivided. Blessed is our God always, now and ever and forever. Arise, now that we have received the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, life-creating, and awesome mysteries of Christ, let us worthily thank the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We thank you, O Mass, the benefactor of souls who love us all this day. You have made us worthy, heavenly, and immortal mysteries to represent the session of the glorious Theotokos and the Virgin Mary. And of all your saints, may straight our path come from us only fear of you, guard of life and safeguard of steps. For you are our sanctification, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who trust in you, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church, sanctify those who love the beauty of your house, glorify them, return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. 
Grant peace to your world, to your church, as a priest, to our government, and to all your people. For all generous giving and ever perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of light. And we give glory, thanksgiving, worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. The blessing of the Lord be upon you through His grace, loving kindness, always, now and ever, and forever. Amen. And glory to you, O Christ God, our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Praise our true God, the reason from the dead of mercy on us and save us. Through the prayers of his most pure mother, of the holy, glorious, illustrious apostles, of our holy father, John Christum, Archbishop of Constantinople, of the holy father, Nicholas, the patron of this church, and through the prayers of all the saints. For Christ is good and loves us all. To Jesus Christ. Thank you for a very beautiful liturgy. Thank you, you came. I would like to invite you next week. We have feast on Wednesday, feast of Saint Archangel Michael. It's a big feast, so please come to not only celebrate these invisible powers created, but to meet our Lord. I would like to wish happy birthday to Mary Federer, to John Dornack, happy birthday, and happy anniversary to the Opalnik family, wedding anniversary, so may God bless you all. My thanks is going to all those who donated and helped, you know, during this week at Soup Kitchen and especially the Naram itself, because it was a lot of, a lot of work this year. And I think that this Ram itself was the best one so far. I think it was profitable, it was over $3,000, what is great. Amazing. Jane, thank you very much for taking care, preparation of this Ram sale. Read the bulletin, the other things are there. Still, there are $3,000 waiting for somebody. So just buy a ticket, you know. This is easy way how to get Christmas gift, you know, early gift. Okay, so have a wonderful Sunday. Two servants of God, Mary, John, two servants of God, the Opalnik family, two servants of God, all those who help or donate it for Amitse, who love this soup kitchen, grant and to all our members of this church, grant, O oh Lord, many years. Amen.